Hi everyone, this is Lori with Quilters Headquarters in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I'm in my home studio this morning and I am making pot holders. And so I've made all oh, five so far. And this is from hmm, a pattern by let's see this is from a pattern by um plum easy and so they have created this pattern and some videos and stuff on how to do this and i thought it was kind of fun you just need four fabrics and so <clears throat> i like i like picking up four contrasting fabrics easy peasy something to do while we're all sitting home wondering what's next and so I'm going to start off here by um, showing you how to make prairie points. So these are prairie points. And you fold them into this shape. And I'm going to show you first how to do that. One of the fun things that I have to help me do that is this prairie pointer by Susan Cleveland. So I'll show you how that works. And I have my handy dandy little iron right here. I just love this little guy. So you fold your, your square in half and your measurements of the squares and the dimensions of everything will be in the pattern, which are on back order right now, but by the time I post this video, I should have them. So then you take your prairie point template and lay down the edges here. So I'm meeting my points to points here and I'm going to fold this over. I kind of like to sharpen that point there just with my fingernails best I can. And I didn't quite get it evenly. Of course, when I'm not on camera, it comes, comes together perfectly. Then I'm going to turn the steam off on my iron so I don't burn myself. And notice I have a little string here tied to my template and I just pulled that out and then I turned my steam back on. You can get your hand real close to the iron if the steam's not on and not burn yourself but if it is on it's a little harder. So I turn the steam off for the next time I go around and look perfect prairie point. Love that. So with all four fabrics I'm gonna make eight prairie points of the smaller squares and or four prairie points from the smaller squares and eight from each of the larger fabrics so stay tuned bob's gonna put this video he's gonna clip them all together for me i think he knows what he's doing so next step will be to putting these prairie points all together into a hot pad okay slight interruption there and so anyway with the stiletto I'll show you what I do here in a minute oh turn my steam off I just don't like the steam on the oh hot 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 well it gets hot so then I use this it's kind of hard okay hang on pull this out get the steam going And then when I take my iron off, I like to use this to just hold those folds down until it cools a little bit. Because this is really too hot to touch. So that's one more use. And another use is coming up for this tool when I sew it. When I sew the hot pads together. So you'll see that shortly. Okay, so I have all my prairie points made, and this is the order that I'm going to layer them on my hot pad in. And to do that, we use this template. It's like um, lightweight interfacing uh, with the grid printed on it. So I'm going to take my, my prairie points. Oh, let's see, my middle one. The first thing you got to do is lay down this one square over the middle so that you can you know cover up any gaps that you might have and so i'll lay these on 
right where the the fold comes together right along the line and um, these grid lines here is where we're going to lay the flat side of each of our prairie points. So something like this, we'll lay these on like so. And actually then it is also time to glue them on. And I take this piece off of my, I like to use uh, this Roxanne's glue, but I take this little guy off. It's really um, too narrow and I don't have the patience for it. So I take this part off so I can squirt it out of this bottle a lot easier. So Roxanne's glue based works great for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is, oh, the first thing I'm going to do is slide this old ruler underneath it because I really don't want all that glue on my wool mat and this you know if I ever do decide to use this ruler again which someday I might um, I can just wash it off I can wash the glue off the top because it is water soluble so I'm going to put a spot of glue right there I probably should have fi filled my glue and I'm just centering it over this square right here and then the next thing we want to do is glue our prairie points on. I put a little bit in each corner and I'm going to lay it right down on this front first layer right here and so it matches this line going down here and the line going down here and the seam line going here. All right. And the first time I made one of these, naturally I turned it over, but we want this fold to be showing. So put that to the top, glue down the back side, line them up. Right here is my grid line there. And there's another matching point. I'm really going to have to stop and fill my my glue thing. You know, it's been so long since I've used this, I'm not sure I remember how to fill that up. I'll figure that off. Figure that out off camera. And then one more for my first layer. And pull that in there just like so. Okay. So next uh, layer is going to be the green layer. Now these we're going to do eight. So we're going to layer to the next line on the grid, the next solid line, and it'll go something like this. Something like this. And so we're getting pretty good at video editing. So I'm going to fast forward through this stuff as I glue it. One thing I'm going to do, the first one that I lay down, I'm not going to glue this side because when I come back around, I'm going to tuck a piece underneath. So you will see that in the next part of the video. So I've glued them all like this. I've just glued all the green ones and I'm laying them down on this line here and here trying to follow the straight line. I turn my template around so that I can be closer to it and see what we're doing. My straight line here. I glue down my edges and I'm matching this line on the grid right there. Okay. Got my glue on both sides there. This one's next. Matching here and here. Oops, I got glue there. Eh. Oh, just like in kindergarten, I'm making a mess. One more here. I did it again. Perhaps gluing one at a time would be ideal. Okay. Put a little dab here, here, 
Now remember, this is my first one I picked up. So I pick up that piece, lay that down, glue, glue, give a little dab of glue there, and lay it down. Luckily, this glue is water soluble. What a mess. I got it all over my hands. I try not to let the glue dry on my board here because it, it does get hard to pick it up. So I'm moving it constantly for that reason. All right, so next layer. Let's see. Let's get my blue ones on. I'll just do two at a time. Maybe I won't make such a mess. Maybe I will. <laughs> oh, pretty funny. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't have glued that both sides down on my first one. Too late now. It'll come up again. So turn it around. Make sure I'm gluing the right side. Usually I don't really make such a mess with glue. I think it's just because I'm on camera. You know, I haven't done a whole lot of videos. I've done live videos, but not like this teaching video. So I'm kind of new to this, trying to figure out ways to, um, you know, uh, cope with the, the virus keeping us home and having our business closed and it's kind of hard. I really like, um, I like the work that I do. I like having my own business and I like having Quilters Headquarters. It's fun. I love my customers. I love going to work every day. Because there's always something new coming up and new people stopping in, nice new people to meet. And quilters always have grand new ideas and new patterns. There's always things to do. I'm not real fond of having to do the, the business side of it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, paying the bills and managing inventory and all that. That kind of is a drag, but it's fun to order stuff. Okay, so this is the last one. Oh, and see my green one here kind of got slanted out of the way. I'm just gonna fix it. Just move it back. Yep, there's still glue under there. So, there's the next layer. And I got one more layer to go. That is going to be the big wild print for most of us. This bottle, by the way, was not easy to fill. I long lost the packaging to it, so if there's instructions to it, I couldn't find them. So I took a pair of pliers and just pulled off this tip and <laughs> filled it. And of course, uh, spilled the glue everywhere. So now I'm using this, the last line on the grid here to line it up. So I don't know, maybe those bottles weren't meant to be refilled. I'm not sure, I'll have to check that out. I know if I put the little tip on it, it's fairly hard to squeeze, especially if I have I have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so my hands are not the strongest anymore. Isn't that looking kind of fun? I'm liking it. Okay, I don't know when my video is going to run out. I usually run out of space. I'm going to pause it for now.
Okay, so now I'm just going to sew along the lines on the pattern. I'm doing the octagon. I still have my walking foot on. Oops, went over a little bit. No problem, we're going to uh, trim it after this, so. Next step after this is trimming an eighth of an inch away from what I just sewed. Okay, so we're down to uh, finishing this pot holder. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to baste my backing and my batting to my pot holder. So I've got Got it, this all sewn down and everything's laid out. The pot holder's intact. I'm laying it on my, my backing, my batting, and my pot holder. So I'm just going to baste around the perimeter here. And I'm going to turn my stitch up to as big as it'll go, which on this machine is 5.0. And I'm going to baste. One more thing that I've done is I have turned the pressure foot pressure. So in other words, this guy back here, I have um, lessened the pressure foot. So where a five is normal on this, I turned it down to about a four. I might even go a little bit more, like three and a half. And that's just because because the... Um, the pot holder is getting pretty thick. So I just decided that it might feed a little bit better with um, less pressure on the pressure foot. So here we go. I'm just going to baste as close to the edge as I can get and as close to the, the line that I've already sewn. Baste around the edges. And then once I'm done basting, I am going to um, do a little bit of top stitching. Oops, I keep going over. No problems, I'll just back up. Turn it. Whatever I go inside or outside the line right now, it'll, it'll be okay because it's gonna be within the binding. So I won't be tearing this basting out. I'll just be binding over it. And I did find, when we come to binding, I did find that um, I tried several different kinds of binding. I tried bias binding. I tried, on the round pot holders, the bias binding worked best. Um, it's much easier to bind the octagon the octagon uh, pot holder than it is especially if you're not using bias binding i tried uh, the directions that um, the directions by plum easy that they suggest where they suggest a narrower binding and just one layer i i'm just not fond of that i'm not used to doing it that way so I'm just going to, when I go ahead and bind it, I'm going to use the two and a half inch strip and just bind it like I would a normal quilt. And I like doing it that way, and I like the, oct the octagon shape as well better than the round as far as putting it together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is turn my stitch length back down to normal. 
about 2.4 on this and I'm going to um, see if I can get in a little bit farther I'm going to top stitch right along here I have navy thread on here and I'm just going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch away I like to start kind of in the middle actually I think a quarter inch away and I start in the middle of a straight line I don't like starting on the corners all right so we'll stop top stitch all the way maybe if I get some of my crap out of the way and I'm gonna stop right on the fold here and my machine lifts up and I will turn it actually I'm gonna get this back here so that I don't catch this part so I'll use my stiletto here to lay it down Sometimes you have to lift it up a little bit farther just to get that. Okay, so now I'm I'm right here. You probably can't see because of the busy design, but I'm right at the the fold line here, the the prairie point, and I am going to go about a quarter of an inch farther beyond that point. And then turn it. Oh, you know what? I need to go one stitch farther. Turn it back to straight. One moment. I dropped my stiletto. One more stitch. That's better. Then I'll just keep on going all the way around. Stop on the inside corner, turn it, hold this part down right here, go about quarter inch past, and turn it. All right, I'll see you on the end of this. I need one more stitch. You have a knee lift on your machine that helps quite a bit because then you can lift it a little bit higher than what it would normally go. I forgot to go past. There we go. I'm getting there. In the inside corner, you want to turn it right up. I'm just going to back up one stitch. I went one stitch too far. This is such a, a busy fabric, it won't be noticeable. Almost to the end. One more stitch. And now I have to 
meet right there with my last stitching, little back stitch, and cut. There we have it. That's pretty cool. I like it. See the back side? Well, you can't see the back side, but you can kind of see where I stitched. Okay, I'm going to do a traditional binding on this. I'm using a two and a quarter inch strip, not two and a half, like I said before. Uh, I'm going to do a double binding. I am going to, um, it's really hard to sew the ends together like I normally do, so it'll probably be kind of a tuck under kind of ending. Um, but I would encourage you to try different, different, you know, some different ways. And I'm going to have you just bind it to suit your own kind of binding. So the binding is going to be your choice today. Thanks for watching my video. And we will have the kits available online. And I will show the links below.